Hello, everyone, and welcome. This is the July 3rd, 2019 edition of the From the Bench podcast. I'm your host, Mark Janish. Well, all the NBA and all of Southern California seems to be on the Kawhi Leonard watch. Again, um, we're looking uh, to see Kawhi Leonard, what he's going to do. Toronto or one of the Los Angeles teams, the Los Angeles Clippers or the Los Angeles Lakers. Now, I'm going to go ahead and go over... um, um, some of that with you today. Uh, what I'd like to see, to be honest with you, is Kawhi Leonard in the Los Angeles Clipper uniform. Only uh, from the standpoint of he gets the benefit of Los Angeles. However, he doesn't have uh, as much pressure with a blue collar team that uh, Doc Rivers has assembled that went 48 and 34 and took the uh, Western Conference champion Golden State Warriors to six games. Uh, had not uh, Kevin Durant began on his 34.2 point per game performance in the playoffs as far as his average. A couple of games in the 40s uh, against the Clippers. Who knows? But uh, right now, we're waiting on Kawhi Leonard. want to say that the uh, Lakers, in my opinion, should take that $32 million cap space, uh, including the uh, Waving of the $4 million no-trade kicker by Anthony Davis. Need to fill out their roster. Troy Daniels, Kyle Kuzma, uh, LeBron James, and uh, Anthony Davis are not necessarily a uh, full squad. The Lakers still need some outside shooting, which they have not had. Uh, however, the buzz in Southern California certainly is where the Lakers stand. Now, a couple weeks ago, we were having... Problems and issues with Rob Palenka, uh, former president of basketball operations, Irvin Magic Johnson. Uh, somewhere along the line, the truth got a little muddied, uh, but uh, Magic Johnson left, of course, at the end of the season. The final game of the season announced uh, unexpectedly that he was leaving, uh, called Ra- uh, Rob Palenka a backstabber, didn't like well, a lot of what was going on, but now he gets to be an ambassador of basketball and, of course, the Los Angeles Lakers. As far as the um, balance of power in the league, uh, I have to say the teams that in the West uh, have bettered themselves, let's say, would be, I probably would say the Utah Jazz and Quinn Snyder bringing in Mike Connolly from the Grizzlies and... Um, Malcolm Brogdon from the Milwaukee Bucks, four years, $85 million. Uh, I would say that uh, probably out of the West, I would probably say Utah has done the most and uh, uh, been the prime mover in free agency so far. Of course, deals cannot be finalized until July 6th. I think Kawhi Leonard is going to keep the world of NBA basketball waiting, and therefore we will see whether Kawhi Leonard goes to the Lakers or the Clippers or uh, Toronto. He may surprise us. But uh, props to Masai Ujiri. Um, however, with the business interest in the United States, it might be who Kawhi Leonard to stay um, stateside. Uh, the desire of... Uh, Mine, as far as this podcast goes, is to look a little bit more deeply into the NBA free agency. And, of course, the borough of Brooklyn, New York, has not been this excited since the um, Brooklyn Dodgers were at Ebbets Field between 1913 and 1957. The Brooklyn Nets have uh, done themselves, acquitted themselves quite well. Now, one of the things that you run into when you're uh, in a market that supports two teams, as I am here uh, in Southern California, just outside the hamlet of Santa Barbara, California, we get to see the Clippers and the Lakers uh, simultaneously uh, so basketball season gets a little interesting, especially uh, for diehard Clipper Nation fans and the ever-expanding Laker Nation, uh, which uh, has grown and proliferated since the 
time of Kobe Bryant and beyond and will continue to grow in my estimation. The Lakers have not qualified for the playoffs in five years. The uh, situation with LeBron James, he's getting a little bit long in the tooth, still has about three years to go on his career. Uh, it would behoove him uh, beyond his outside interest to take an interest to in Laker basketball, considering that the Laker fans are very loyal. They pay, they pay high dollar to go to the games, happy that uh, that's able to happen for them. Uh, the one thing that I would say for the Lakers, they need to get their management structure uh, in place to where there's not 12 voices, maybe one or two. Let the basketball people handle the basketball things. And uh, maybe a lot of these names that I've been hearing regarding Linda Rambis, Kurt Rambis, and others who seem to have influence over Jeannie Buss, um, that needs to be rectified in Los Angeles. And the uh, turnstiles will be uh, moving briskly at Staples Center uh, and uh, the parking at 11th and Olympic, corner of 11th and Olympic in Los Angeles, will be full. And uh, they'll be making a lot of money uh, through the turnstiles, sales of jerseys, memorabilia, etc., etc., etc. Now, the Lakers actually last year did the same thing that they might want to do this year with the $32 million. I'm an advocate that they take the $32 million, fill out their roster with one or two year agreements for the most part. Uh, everyone was on one-year contracts in anticipation of bringing in another marquee free agent uh, alongside LeBron, which actually uh, has occurred, of course, and Laker fans should be happy about that. But the one thing that the Lakers need to do, they need to get some outside shooting, and hopefully I do believe that Frank Vogel, despite his mixed record in uh, Indiana, uh, more positive than in Miami, let's say, uh, he's going to be a defensive-minded coach. Of course, uh, Jason Kidd in the wings. Uh, unfortunately, I think Frank Vogel is being set up for uh, not necessarily to fail, but I do believe that he will be removed as coach uh, of the Lakers within the next two seasons in favor of an up-and-coming Jason Kidd. Now, the uh, Lakers are the more dramatic team let's say, the more soap operatic team. Uh, as we know, uh, the Laker brand is synonymous uh, since the Lakers arrived from Minneapolis uh, in 19, I believe it was 1959. Uh, the Los Angeles uh, brand is iconic. Um, in order for the, um, in order of the teams that Angelinos and Southern Californians uh, support, the Dodger fan base, of course, I did mention that they came from Brooklyn after the closing of Ebbets Field in 1957, beginning the 1958 season in the very expansive uh, Los Angeles Memorial Coliseum, uh, 90,000 seats. And, of course, they won the Major League Baseball World Series against uh, Larry Sh uh, against. Uh, the Go Go White Sox of 1959, and of course, Dodger Stadium built on April 10th, 1962. Still a very beautiful stadium, despite a couple of remodels. Uh, a very, very pleasant place to see a game in the shadows of the San Gabriel Mountains. Now, the Los Angeles Clippers, however, um, they are considered always the second fiddle in the chorus uh, or in the uh, orchestra in Los Angeles. Now, I will give credit to Clipper fans. Clipper fans are very hearty. They are very, very committed. Uh, I believe that the deep-pocketed Steve Ballmer probably needs to leave Staples Center and build his own arena in Los Angeles. Of course, with the regulations of building things in the state of California, he may have a little bit of... Uh, Problem getting that done, but he may need to want he may, may he may want to start the process now. And in the case of um, the Clippers, they've retained Patrick Beverly, 
three years, forty million dollars. So he will be in the Laker. He will be in the Clipper fold. Um, uh, Danilo Gallinari, um, uh, Gilchrist Alexander, a good young player, lots of upside. I would say uh, we will also want to congratulate Sixth Man of the Year, uh, a scorer extraordinaire, Lou Williams, uh, for the Clippers, and uh, we we'd like to see Doc Rivers. Uh, continue to build and Steve Bomber build, and of course uh, the logo himself, Jerry West, advising the Clippers. He went from Memphis to Golden State, built a championship pedigree there, and of course uh, at 80 years old, Jerry West uh, still doing a uh, yeoman's job for the Clippers. The Clippers, however, uh, need to build. I believe they do need someone at the five. I'm looking for Landry Shamit to shoot more. I believe he can be a great uh, shooter. I don't believe he's a one that is a playmaking guard. I believe he is more of a shooting guard at the two slot, a one and two being the guard positions on the floor, three and four being the forward slots, and of course five being the center position. I would like to see Kawhi Leonard go to the Clippers for the sheer reason that uh, this idea that you can recruit your friends to play on super teams, I do believe that that era is not quite over, but at the same time to encourage the balance of power in the NBA, we definitely want to see uh, more teams in the mix. Uh, similar to uh, what we saw in the 1980s with the Bad Boy Pistons of Isaiah Thomas, Bill Lane Beer, Vinnie Johnson, and Joe Dumars. The Los Angeles Lakers, of course, the rivalry with the Boston Celtics and Larry Bird between Larry Bird and Magic Johnson began in 1979 uh, when they faced each other in the NCAA tournament, the Indiana State uh, uh, Sycamores, and of course, the Michigan State Spartans uh, uh, coached by Judd Heathcote. So, ladies and gentlemen, uh, as far as who won, I've given you my winner for the Western Conference, and we're going to talk about Kevin Durant and Kyrie Irving uh, in a moment, but I want to tell you the the balance of power in the Eastern Conference. It's a little more even right now. I think the folks that won the day was Elton Brand, the Philadelphia 76ers. Um, uh, <clears throat> they retained uh, Richardson. They retained uh, Tobias Harris, a uh, trade from the Los Angeles Clippers. And they got a veteran guy. This is this guy is going to do a lot for that locker room, a lot for Joel Embiid's hopeful, hopefully growth, hopeful growth and maturity. Uh, Al Horford, uh, true professional, made the playoffs all twelve years of his career, five All Star appearances. Just a steady guy who's going to give you uh, between eighteen and probably eight or ten rebounds a game maybe four to five assists if he's on his game, but definite professional, definite veteran that's going to get that locker room uh, in order uh, in Philadelphia. Definitely be an asset to Brett Brown on the court because the way I look at Al Horford, I think he's essentially a coach and will be an extension of Brett Brown on the floor. Uh, ben Simmons. Ben Simmons is a little bit of an anomaly, folks. He's, uh, you know, 16 points. Uh, eight or nine rebounds, two or three assists, but he, he uh, is an in-the-paint uh, player. As we know, he doesn't necessarily have a jump shot that we that we could say is consistent. Uh, I'm not sure that I give him five years, $170 million. That seems to be like a lot for a guy who has a lot of upside but is not productive necessarily from beyond, say, 12 feet. Uh, with no jump shot, uh, today's NBA is a play. What I like to say about today's NBA is it's played above the circle. Uh, the shooters that we know, 
the Jimmy Butlers of the world, the uh, Golden State Warriors, Steph Curry, these guys, Damian Lillard, five years, $196 million contract with his, to stay with the Portland Trailblazers, C.J. McCollum. That's a good uh, situation for him. Hassan Whiteside leaving Miami, coming to Portland. Coming to Portland, uh, Portland losing Seth Curry and Farouk Aminu, but gaining uh, Nurkic back. Uh, that should be a help to them. Um, am I sure that they're going to uh, be in the Western Conference Finals next year? They're going to be close, but once again, uh, props to uh, Quinn Snyder and management in Utah. They've upgraded their team. Rudy Gobert, Mike Connolly, uh, <clears throat> and uh, <clears throat> the young squad that they have. Uh, going to be doing a lot of damage in the Western Conference. As far as the East goes, we talked about Ben Simmons. want to also uh, mention that uh, J.J. Redick, his 18 points, have gone off to uh, New Orleans. He's going to be playing with the New Orleans Pelicans. Um, that's going to be a loss for them. They're going to have to find some outside shooting. Hopefully, Joel Embiid will... Uh, grow and mature uh, as far as the management of his body, uh, as far as his his uh, eating habits, carrying a little bit too much weight necessarily for those damaged knees. But we will see what happens. I don't know um, where the uh, Sixers will end up, but I do believe that they actually had so far um, the better of the Eastern Conference free agent uh, <clears throat> Excuse me, free agency. Now, Milwaukee, uh, Brooke Lopez, Robin Lopez, Chris Middleton will be back in Milwaukee. Uh, Malcolm Brogdon, big loss for them. Uh, Miritich, he went off to the Euro League. He's going to be playing for Barcelona, one of the highest paid European uh, players ever. Okay, so he's going to be cashing in those Euros. Uh, in uh, Madrid, and so happy for him. Five years in the NBA, could have made 12 to 15 million per year as far as the contract goes, but he chose to go back to the Euro League. Um, as far as Milwaukee goes, Milwaukee uh, was exposed during the playoffs. I do believe that I, they're going to need uh, some help. With Giannis, Giannis is not a one-dimensional player, but he does need to improve his outside shot. And as we saw during the playoffs, he's good running downhill and inside, but he can be stopped with the proverbial two- or three-man wall inside the paint. So Milwaukee's got a lot of work to do. Congratulations to Mike Budenholzer. Uh, Mike Budenholzer did an excellent job, but once again, I probably rank uh, right now Philadelphia, uh, Milwaukee, and then we're going to talk about the Boston Celtics. Uh, for some reason, Danny Ainge was the darling uh, for the last four or five years as far as stockpiling draft picks for the Celtics. It looks like in the sign-and-trade option that uh, he had with Kemba Walker, and uh, Terry Rozier. Terry Rozier is going to Charlotte. Uh, Kemba Walker coming from Charlotte to the uh, Celtics to, in a sense, essentially replace Kyrie Irving. We'll get to the Brooklyn Nets uh, in a minute, uh, but uh, at the same time, we're continuing, going to continue to focus on the uh, Celtics. The Celtics made a mistake. Uh, Somehow, some way, Brad Stevens, a good coach, one of the darlings of the NBA after taking Butler to two straight NCAA Final Fours, uh, seemed to have made a, a, best I can say, a chemistry mistake with the Boston Celtics. Trying to insert Gordon Hayward, uh, based on the money they're paying him, into, the, into a lineup that... Um, <clears throat> Uh, Tatum's, the Tatum's, the Rogiers of the world, um, 
and other of their young players were not ready to happen. Now, I'm not sure that uh, he was ready, um, just based on the gruesomeness of the injury, which I won't go into, but uh, it was a gruesome injury. And uh, by the end of the season, of course, uh, Gordon Hayward getting back to his old uh, self as far as being able to play. Hopefully next year will be a better year for him. Uh, I see Kemba Walker um, going in as an eight-year veteran, trying to stabilize the uh, <clears throat> floor game for the Celtics. But I really, really hope that Brad Stevens and Danny Ainge and some of the assistant coaches for Boston really get in Brad Stevens' ear and say, hey, yo, uh, coach, can you uh, get your rotation squared away so everybody understands their roles? At certain points last year, I felt that uh, the Celtics never really uh, put it together, whether there be conflicts with Kyrie Irving and his leadership style or lack thereof. Um, at that particular point, probably put uh, the Celtics in the third slot. Now, everybody is getting excited over Brooklyn. I'm happy for Brooklyn. I'm happy for the Prokhorovs of the world. I'm happy for... Um, Brooklyn, in the sense they lost the Dodgers to Los Angeles in 1957. There hasn't really been too much going on in Brooklyn since then um, <clears throat> until this year. Now, the situation with the <clears throat> the situation with the Brooklyn Nets, uh, Spencer Dinwiddie, Karis LeVert, Joe Harris, Washington State. Uh, product, three-point shooting champion as far as the All-Star weekend. Good team, a very, very solid team. Um, D'Angelo Russell has been shipped off to the Bay Area, San Francisco, Golden State. Um, four years, $117 million. I think that's going to work out really well for the Golden State Warriors in the sense that they do need a true one. Uh, they can put their... Uh, Steph Curry and Clay Thompson in the um, Clay Thompson in the four position at forward, and of course uh, put Steph Curry in his natural two position, to where he doesn't necessarily need to handle the ball. And Draymond Green can still handle the ball, can still switch and guard people um, in a in a very positive way. So you still have three stars uh, in the Bay Area. I do believe that D'Angelo Russell. Um, all-Star last year is going to solidify that backcourt with a loss of Andre Iguodala and take some of the load off of Steph Curry and Draymond Green to bring the ball up the floor. Now, do I believe that the Warriors will make the playoffs? They probably will. I think they're probably going to come in at 7 or 8 due to the strength of the Western Conference, but we will see minus uh, Clay Thompson for most of next year, if not all of next year. I would expect Clay Thompson, um, they say five to seven months. I would expect to see Clay Thompson toward the end of the season. That would be March of 2020. As far as um, the Brooklyn Nets go, Kyrie Irving leaves Boston. Boston was not a choice he made, but this is the first opportunity he has to um, go to Brooklyn. One of the things regarding New York because the New York because the New York Knicks were 17 and 65 traded Kristaps uh, Porzingis to Dallas Porzingis coming off an injury 5 years 158 million dollars uh, Spike Lee in attendance at the games all of that, Steve Mills, Scott Perry, James Dolan. Now, as far as the Knicks go, uh, they have some serviceable players. They have Julius Randle. They have Wayne Ellington. They have R.J. Barrett, just drafted out of Duke, 18 years old. Can't wait to see him play. But, uh, the thing about Brooklyn is they have a lot of upside. Brooklyn took Philadelphia um, 
to five games, a gentleman's sweep, but um, nothing much has been expected out of Brooklyn uh, for the last five years, but they've built a solid team, um, and there's no I in, in team. They don't have what I would call a lot of first-tier stars until now, but uh, with the fact that Ke Kevin Durant will not be seen in uniform in Brooklyn for at least another year, uh, until not this coming season, but the season after next, uh, Kyrie Irving, it would behoove Kyrie Irving to show and demonstrate uh, more maturity and more uh, leadership. A lot of dysfunction with the Celtic locker room last season. I attribute to him and his inability to manage the team, and I think he's probably learning on the fly considering uh, he's been in the locker rooms with LeBron James, and he now knows the difficulty of bringing guys together who are on the same page, accomplishing the same goals rather than um, not. So Kyrie Irving is going to have a lot to prove in the uh, largest market in America. Now, <clears throat> the good thing is, excuse me, the good thing is, is that um, the expectations for Brooklyn were not high this year, but they played well. Next year, they're going to be a little bit higher. Uh, and by the time Durant does uh, don that Brooklyn uniform, they're going to be higher still. So uh, we will see what happens with Brooklyn. I like Brooklyn, but I do believe that in the order of the pecking order of the Eastern Conference, right now, you probably have uh, Philadelphia, Milwaukee, Boston, uh, New Jersey, and I would have to say, uh, Toronto at number five, even though Pascal Siakam, Fred Van Bleet, Marc Gasol, and uh, Kyle Lowry won the championship. I think they took advantage of some injury circumstances similar to the Detroit Pistons against the Los Angeles Lakers in the 1980s. Similar, of course, um, to the Boston Celtics taking advantage of injuries to Magic Johnson uh, during finals playoff time. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar was in there as well. Uh, I do believe I, I do believe that Toronto will be competitive. Now, will Nick Nurse win, uh, you know, 50 to 60 games? Probably not. Number one, the target is going to be on Toronto's back. And mine is Kawhi Leonard. And I do not believe... I personally want to go on record right now that Kawhi Leonard is not returning to Toronto. I don't believe it. I believe that was just a one-time deal. We saw your jury roll the dice, and he actually came up a huge winner, of course, uh, with the Toronto championship. Toronto will be formidable, but I don't believe in a very uh, much weakened – well, I can't even say that. In a more balanced Eastern Conference, uh, I'm not sure that Toronto is going to be representative and going to be moving in a way. I'm not saying they're not going to play well, but I do not believe they're going to defend their title. Very hard to defend, especially with the hangover of an initial championship and the delirium and the joy. But then again, in October, when training camp starts for most teams, It'll be, can Toronto do this with the ever-improving Eastern Conference? I already mentioned that. So I put Brooklyn at four. The Celtics, uh, I'm sorry, uh, Toronto at five as far as my ranking. Toronto in the fifth spot of Eastern Conference. My rankings of Eastern Conference teams, Toronto at five. You probably have uh, um, Milwaukee at four. You definitely have um, the Celtics at three, Philadelphia at one, and maybe Toronto um, uh, in there between two and five. But I'm very impressed with the Eastern Conference teams. Happy that uh, there is some parity in the league, and that that's a that would be a concern for me. Uh, as far as building a super team, that seems to be the rage. 
LeBron James did it by taking his talents to Miami and teaming with Dean with Dwayne Wade. Um, so, like I said, Eastern Conference is going to be very competitive in the West. Uh, Anthony Davis and LeBron James. The five-year playoff drought is going to be over. Um, depending on load management, how many games LeBron plays versus AD. I think there's more pressure on uh, Anthony Davis because he's younger and he hasn't been put under the microscope as he's going to be in Los Angeles. Fortunately, the Los Angeles media, except for a few uh, writers, um, are a little bit a little bit more forgiving than, say, East Coast writers, Philadelphia, New York, Boston, let's say. But the fact of the matter is, is that um, this type of stuff, um, if the Lakers don't at least qualify for the Western Conference Finals, don't make that trip, I think everybody – in the media and even some of the fans are going to be saying it was a failed experiment. So the uh, Lakers need to be aware of that. They also need to be aware that their roster needs to be filled out with some shooters. I don't want to see them get some aging guards who can barely bring the ball up the floor. I would rather see the Lakers go with younger guys, maybe a one year, or max two-year contract. I don't know that I want to see uh, Contavious Caldwell Pope back in a Laker uniform. He was not effective um, or as effective last year as he was the year before. But we'll see what the Lakers do. Uh, hopefully Jeannie Buss and Rob Polinka, who Polinka, um, I'm not necessarily trustworthy of him. Um, just looking into those uh, those those uh, darkened eyes where there's no light that I can see. Um, uh, looking into the soul of Ron Palenka, I don't really trust him. I think that that uh, press conference and the introduction of Frank Vogel as the new coach of the Lakers was a fiasco, and it was it was more a PR stunt. Uh, turned into that because reporters were asking Rob Palenka, well, what about Magic Johnson and what he said regarding you backstabbing him and things of this nature? Now, uh, the interesting thing is Palenka took the high road and he wasn't necessarily critical of Magic Johnson, but I will say this, having seen that press conference on Spectrum Sportsnet, 24-hour um, Laker channel that's available in Southern California, he didn't deny a lot of it either. Uh, he didn't say straight out, well, I unequivocally deny uh, this and this is wrong, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I do believe that um, even though, you know, I don't know who's uh, being the voice of the Lakers during negotiations, I would assume Palenka go, uh, would be. But to be honest with you, um, if I met Rob Palenka on the street, I wouldn't trust him as far as I could throw him. Don't trust him today. So, as far as the Western Conference, Denver is going to be formidable. Jamal Murray re-inked to, to an extension. Um, Gary Harris coming out of uh, Denver. And then, of course, um, um, all the players they have, they're going to be a year better. <coughs> Houston Rockets. I think they need to fix some things. I think that uh, Daryl Morey might want to trade either Chris Paul. Uh, I'm not sure you trade James Harden. Probably no. But you definitely want to uh, get out from under those contracts. Not sure that the Mike D'Antoni, you know, offense in under 10 seconds or 7 seconds. Uh, made famous with Steve Nash in uh, Phoenix during his days in Phoenix is going to work because the Rockets need to play some defense. We all know, we all know that playoff basketball is played at a very half court level. Uh, the 82 game regular season, 82 game regular season might need to be shortened 
And I hope that uh, Adam Silver sees that. I think that the NBA needs to put some more value and more incentive for star players to play. We spoke about load management regarding LeBron James and regarding Kawhi Leonard. Uh, but if you're paying high dollar to go to NBA games, you want to see the best uh, when they come into your city, especially if they're only coming into your city once a year, east versus west. Okay, So um, those are some things that uh, can we can discuss at a later time. But um, I would say Denver, going to be formidable. Utah, I already mentioned. Portland is going to be in that mix. Uh, Los Angeles, the Lakers, probably should be uh, within the top four, assuming everybody stays healthy and assuming Kyle Kuzma can continue to grow and the Lakers get the appropriate outside shooting, which they do not have right now. Um, so Laker Nation, be encouraged. Um, all my uh, Laker Nation fans, including Blue Magic out of uh, the state of Washington, uh, be happy, but be careful what you wish for because right now the Lakers have a huge decision to make regarding that $32 million. I've told you what I would do. But uh, it's possible that Kawhi Leonard could be wearing a Laker uniform and then all bets are off as far as what we're talking about uh, in the Western Conference. Um, Houston, formidable. Denver, formidable, probably the number one or two seed. The Lakers, the Clippers, the Jazz. So there's, you know, four or five or six teams already. And then, of course, um, seventh and eighth slots is always going to be a fight. I don't know, uh, Willie Cauley-Stein going to the Bay Area, getting out of Minnesota. Um, Minnesota will probably be there uh, with Carl Anthony Towns uh, battling for that seven or eight slot and possibly – the New, Orleans Par uh, the New Orleans Pelicans with a uh, veteran coach, Alvin Gentry, and a couple of veterans in J.J. Redick to lead the New Orleans Pelican squad. And, of course, we don't know how Zion Williamson is going to pan out for the New Orleans Pelicans, but good for them that they're filling out their roster in a uh, very positive, constructive way. So I think... I think it's uh, it would behoove the Lakers to make the right decision. I'm not sure that signing Kawhi Leonard is the right decision on a long-term basis. But if Kawhi Leonard wants to win another championship in the next three years, and perhaps LeBron James wants to cede the Laker leadership uh, mantle to Anthony Davis or Kawhi Leonard, for that matter, Maybe we, maybe that's what we see. But uh, we will see. Once again, Kawhi Watch is happening. I want to also mention the women's national soccer team playing Sunday, um, 7 a.m. for pre-match, 8 a.m. West Coast time uh, on Channel 11, the, uh, actually uh, the Fox Network, whatever channel that is in your area. Um, I've given you Pacific times. I want to give... Uh, props to Megan Rapino. Uh, Megan Rapino, um, four goals in two games, did not play. Uh, she is recovering from a hamstring reported injury. Uh, Alex Morgan scored uh, in the 31st minute yesterday on her 30th birthday. So congratulations to Jill Ellis and the American squad. Uh, Kristen Press. Scored in minute number 10 for Team USA. Team USA playing the Netherlands or Sweden. And before this broadcast, uh, they were in the 31st, actually 39th minute of the first half. No score between Sweden and the Netherlands, who the USA will play the winner of that match um, as it's uh, happening right now. Not sure what the score is. Can't necessarily take the time to pick that up for you, but uh, uh, definitely something to look at. So this is... Um, just my perspective on some free agent uh, uh, doings. Um, once again, clear winners to me in the Eastern Conference, Brooklyn and Philadelphia. Clear winners to me in the West, Quinn Snyder 
coach of the Utah Jazz and the Utah Jazz organization. Excellent job. Considering it's a small market, considering you lost Gordon Hayward, uh, <clears throat> and um, uh, Donovan Mitchell uh, has somebody to a right shotgun with in a veteran guard, Mike Connolly from the Grizzlies. That's going to help them. Rudy Gobert uh, can only do uh, good things and continue to grow on his upside. Uh, as a true five now. Um, so we're looking for uh, um, some good things to happen. Of course, Malcolm Brogdon going to help them from the outside in Utah. So uh, congratulations to that uh, organization for doing a beautiful job of retooling and rebuilding uh, the Utah Jazz. And that's an area where, you know, not a lot of free agents are going to be clamoring to go to Utah. They're not going to be clamoring to go to Portland, but C.J. McCollum and Damian Lillard in the backcourt, always a threat. Um, <clears throat> so we'll see what uh, Nurkic does for the Blazers. I do expect the Blazers to be qualifying for the playoffs next year. Not sure they're going to end up in slot number three, but that's why we play the regular season, and perhaps they may surprise a few more people with a little bit more experience, and hopefully – uh, Damian Lillard will continue to improve um, his game. Uh, he is a sharpshooter. He is a sniper, so to speak. Um, he, uh, when left to his druthers, um, he has a great game. A um, little bit of pressure in the recently concluded playoffs. Put him in a bad spot as far as that goes. But um, congratulations to the Portland Trailblazers for a great season and a pretty decent uh, free agent haul, even though Seth Curry departed. Farouk Amino has now departed. So we will see what uh, Terry Stotts uh, does to rebuild uh, the holes in that squad. Um, waiting to see what's going to happen with the Blazers in the future. I want to thank you for listening to this edition of the From the Bench podcast. I'm Mark Janish. You can listen to uh, any and all editions and episodes of the From the Bench podcast at my website, accessmediaglobal.com. If you'd like to support the podcast, you can certainly do that by going to uh, uh, click on the appropriate uh, credit or debit card icon through PayPal. Uh, you can always give. Uh, upper right-hand corner of the website. We're going to continue to follow the free agent frenzy that is uh, happening right now. We'll continue to be on Kawhi Leonard Watch. But want to wish everyone around the nation, around the United States, a very, very happy Independence Day. Enjoy your day. But remember, um, freedom is freedom is not free. It's very expensive and not cheap. And we give honor to first responders. We give honor to uh, those that have sacrificed uh, their lives uh, through the military and other auspices to give us our freedom. So enjoy your 4th of July, and uh, I will certainly do the same. We'll be back next week um, with another edition of the From the Bench podcast. This has been the From the Bench podcast, NBA free agent heavy. Uh, from the Bench Podcast. Good luck to the U.S. women's national soccer team as they face the winner of Netherlands and Sweden. Once again, that's going to be Sunday, July 7th uh, on your fo local Fox station. Uh, check your local listings. I will say uh, 7 a.m. pre-match uh, opportunities and 8 a.m. Uh, uh, first kick on the pitch uh, from Paris, France. Until then, until next week, I'm Mark Janish. Thanks for listening on the From the Bench podcast for July 3rd, 2019. Uh, thanks for listening, everyone, and you have a great day and a good holiday. Thanks for listening.